Welcome back, my friends. In this video, we're going to examine the assumptions that are required in order to conduct a two-way analysis of variance, or a two-way ANOVA. Assumptions for the two-way ANOVA really include three specific things regarding the independent and dependent variables. Now, by saying that, that we do this with the independent and dependent, what that means is we examine the dependent across the independent variable groupings. And the first of these is that we have no outliers in the group. You know, outliers are extreme values, and uh, we will look at how to handle them. It also assumes that we have normality of the, the dependent variable across the groups, and then that we have homogeneity of variance between groups. No, no outliers means no extremes. Normality means that there are, each of the group variables are normally distributed. And then homogeneity of variance means that the standard deviations are the same. So basically the curves are the same width. The, the two-way ANOVA is considered to be fairly robust to violations of normality. Of course, this means that the data only have to be approximately normally distributed. The problem with that statement is to find approximately normally distributed. I don't think anyone can give a definition of what approximately normally distributed means. A whole lot of different interpretations of that. The assumptions that you're going to examine are tested in this order. The first thing you do is you detect outliers, you examine data normality in each group, and examine homogeneity of variances. Assumptions are tested before proceeding with a two-way ANOVA. So if you're doing this research for your dissertation or, or you're conducting research, the first thing you want to do is start assessing the assumptions at which we're going to examine in, in later videos as to how you would actually run that in SPSS. Now, what if the assumptions are not met? Well, if the basic assumptions are not met, you have three options. You can make corrections to your data set. You can use an alternate statistical test or you could justify the robust nature of the two-way ANOVA with support from existing experts in the field. Now, should you do the latter, let me assure you that in every area, if an assumption is not met, there's a, there's a, a researcher out there, someone expert in the field of statistics, who says that the uh, two-way ANOVA is robust. The danger of that is, is there are also experts that say it's, it doesn't work. So, you know, you kind of have to go the best way you can with seeing that things are done and that they meet your expectations. You must address the issue should the data set fail to meet the assumptions. In other words, if it doesn't meet an assumption, then you're going to have to justify why what you've done or, or you're going to have to proceed. Now, assumption one relates to outliers, and many researchers consider it best to test for outliers before examining the remaining assumptions should outliers be identified, you have three options. And I, I say in SPSS, because if, if you're not using SPSS and some other software, you might have four. The fourth one is to run a robust two-way ANOVA. But uh, I hate to tell you, SPSS doesn't support that. The first thing you can do is replace the outlier with a less extreme value. This is a very common process. You just bump it down to the next value or up to the next value so that it's not quite such an extreme outlier. You can transform your data set. In other words, you can take your data set and make it parallel, uh, uh, make a parallel data set using some uh, mathematical transformation. Or you can proceed under the assumption that the outliers will not materially affect the analysis. Of course, uh, I want you to remember that if you didn't meet the assumption, you certainly have to declare it so that uh, the informed and educated reader can examine your results and, and accept them accordingly. Assumption two is normality, and normality can be tested using several approaches. Uh, you can examine skewness and kurtosis together. The skewness tells us whether it's left or right skewed. Kurtosis tells us whether it's packed in on the mean or spread out from the mean. Uh, one could also conduct the Shapiro-Wilk test for normality. And uh, these analyses, analyses need to be run for the dependent variable by each grouping. So if you have, you have uh, two variables and you have three groupings in each, you've got to run six of these. If you have two variables and you have two groupings in one and you have six in the other, you've got to run eight of these. Now, the Shapiro-Wilkes test will provide a significance less 
then .05 if the assumption of normality has been violated. Now in saying this, I'm just accepting the .05 level of significance, which is fairly standard in the field of education. You may want to use a .01, that's up to you. If the data are not normally distributed, you have several options. Again, you can transform your data set. You can consider reorganizing your data set to mimic a simple one-way ANOVA and utilize a non-parametric design such as the Kruskal-Wallace test. Now, I remind you that the Kruskal-Wallace H test uh, really assumes that the data are, are balanced uh, with the median. Uh, so that's pretty neat. You'd be assuming that. Uh, run the test under the assumption that the two-way ANOVA is robust deviations from normality. You just simply have to find an expert that agrees that you can proceed. And of course, the danger is there are experts that say you can, there's experts that say you can't. Uh, assumption three is homogeneity of variance. If homogeneity is not present, the danger of a type one error increases, you have greater likelihood of, uh, of uh, rejecting the uh, null hypothesis when it's true. Now, Levine's test is used to examine homogeneity across the groupings. In other words, when you run this in SPSS, you can just have a Levine's test for each of them. And if you do not have homogeneity, you can transform your data or proceed with the analysis and declare the failure of the data set to meet the assumption of homogeneity. Now, uh, I want to point out to you that uh, we're going to run this in SPSS shortly, and I'm going to show you how you break this out by grouping and how you use the explore function and all of that. But, but there, there are three basic assumptions. No outliers, you have normality, and you have homogeneity of variance. These must be assessed before running the two-way ANOVA. Again, may the odds be ever in your favor unless you and I are in the same competition. Then you're on your own. Have a great day.